Okay, it's Saturday the 20th of August, 2022, coming up to 20 to 5 in the evening. And I've got lots of cars roaring outside my window for some reason. The traffic's really busy and it almost sounds like the ocean. But anyway, I'm now on to my fourth Savile and Madeleine McCann video. And I just wanted to conclude and tie up all the loose ends of all the other videos by, by just adding a few things I've missed. I actually spent a lot more time on this subject than I thought I would. But I want to talk about the police Savile's influence over the police and I'm going to start with Mark Williams Thomas. Now he's in charge of announcing a lot of these unsolved crimes to the public. He was the one who started off talking about the Jimmy Savile case and he was the one who allegedly broke this Jimmy Savile case. And Later in the video, I'm going to discuss him in relation to Madeleine McCann, but right now, I want you to take a look at this. Recently, he was interviewed on Morning TV, and he admitted point blank that A, the police know who killed Jill Dando, B, they chose not to investigate it, and C, they had orders from above that no further action was required. But you think, looking at, looking at that style of murder, yeah. um, you say that, has all the hallmarks of a professional it, hit. Absolutely. I mean, w I got hold of 52,000 documents from the Metropolitan Police some years ago, and I did a total review on the whole of the file. And what jumped out of there was the lines of inquiries that weren't followed. And, and some of those, for example, were that there was over 100 potential suspects who were never interviewed. They went down the road of, of looking at Barry George, and then these hundreds they just put to one side. Mm -hmm. There was one where there was a specific individual named as having shot Jill Dando, and the gun had been thrown into a canal. And on the specific instructions of the senior investigating officer, he says no further action on this on this action on this inquiry. Yeah. What about what about the, the, the criminal aspect? And the criminal aspect is to do with Crime Watch. You know, so one of the specific individuals who was in this 100 names is a very well-known individual who organises hits. He was never spoken to, and there is a very strong possibility he may have had something to do with it. I don't know who pulled the trigger, and the, but, I, but the, one of the strong possibilities is that this individual, who is a very, very big underworld um, you know, individual who's been involved in organising hits on people, may well have had something to do with it. It, it was a professional hit. This man got away and was never being caught. Just, sorry, just to... He actually said it three times, and he said it in a way that he was discussing something trivial. He got away with it, three, and the police decided to do it. And he got away with it, and the police decided, he got away, and he did, you know. Is there some kind of MK Ultra mind control technique in the way that he's speaking? I mean, I just, because you, if you don't listen, you don't hear it. If you don't really listen to what they're saying, and oftentimes the, it's so boring when they start talking about 52,000 pages of documents, blah, 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 and they, they, they um, flood the truth with a bunch of minutia so that people do zone out and they don't listen. But anyway, that's him said it, black and white, this guy's too scary, we're too scared to deal with him, we're not going to deal with him, and now, 20 some odd years after her death, it still remains unsolved, we're just going to go on television and tell you all about it. And I'm using the word we because he is a spokesperson for the police, he is an ex-copper supposedly, but now he's a media personality and it's important to point out right now that he's being paid to do this interview. I mean, there's only four possibilities what happened to Madeleine McCann. The first is that it was an accidental death and a cover-up, according to what uh, Giancarlo Amaral said, the Portuguese policeman said, and he wrote a book about it and he was sued for libel, you know, so on and so forth. So that was the first theory. The second theory is the one put forward by the McCanns, that she was abducted. Now, me coming along talking about this invisible weapon could give that theory some possibility outside the realms of history, because historically speaking, this weapon hasn't appeared in any of the books as far as police work and investigation. You know, no one even knows what this weapon's called. It's brand new, it's, or secret, it's secretive. I mean, they might have been using it since the 70s, but um, the fifth and the last theory that I'm going to put across is Madeleine McCann's passing, death or abduction, 
was a satanic sacrifice for what was going to happen four years later in the death of Jimmy Savile. But I, what I see when I look at the photography around the subject of Madeline's passing or abduction or disappearance, when it comes to the Catholic Church, having looked into Jimmy Savile's relationship with the Catholic Church, it all adds up to, on paper, a satanic sacrifice. Now, whether that's a spoof or whether that's real, I don't know. I'm not saying it was. I'm just observing. Because, of first of all, there's, there was the dates. There was the weekend, a week before her fourth birthday, she disappeared. This was the weekend, which was the anniversary of the end of World War Two, where Germany surrendered to England. And apparently, allegedly, the Nazis did not surrender. They went underground. Allegedly. The following week, which would have been the 12th of May, which again is a 4444, she would have been four years old. And so that was her birthday. And it's exactly four years later that Jimmy Savile allegedly died on the 29th of October, two days before his birthday, which was Halloween. So again, we've got from the surrender agreement to Halloween. We've got from May period through to the October period. Again, I'm just observing it. I'm reporting it. I know it's these numbers and dates and ceremonies mean nothing to me, but they mean an awful lot to people who study Satanism. Because when Jimmy Savile died, he was 84 years old, which again is eight fours, or 444, which is an identical mirror of Madeleine McCann. So yeah, here we have the period of May to October, we have all of these number synergies. We have the 444 showing up on both sides. We have a birth and a death, a birthday, i.e. Madeline's birthday, and a death. Now, one of the results of this whole exercise is was to kind of demonize the McCanns as being bad parents. In the next clip, Pierce Morgan asks some, uh, the McCanns some quite tough questions. Joey, I mean, a difficult question. But obviously the resort you were in had lots of nanny facilities and they weren't that expensive to use and you both were professionals earning money. Another criticism that's put to you is why didn't you just pay to have a, a nanny if you wanted to go out for dinner? Yeah, I mean, it's not a question of money. We did uh, what we thought was best in the kids' routines and... I think as parents, uh, we were we had a very good routine in terms of the whole bath, bed, story type thing. And and I, I take your point, but for me, you know, if your children are asleep upstairs in a bedroom and you're dining in the garden, you're out of sight and you can't hear them. Um, and that's the similar thing to me. We were except, I guess, that most people's homes are secure. Sure. You know, th this was not a secure property. People could come in and off the street if they wanted to. That that's where the criticism. I guess, comes at its most fierce towards you is, you know, you're, you're intelligent people and you were certainly good parents. There's no one's questioning that from all accounts that we've all heard. It's just when you have people coming in and off a street like that and it's not your home and it's not really secure. Again, I mean, I think it, it's back to the safety issue. We did not perceive an element of threat and child abduction is so rare, why would you have ever have thought that someone was going to get into an apartment and steal your child? It just didn't enter our head. If it had, have, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah, and we've been uh, all these questions day in, day out, yeah. why, how, why? And I can only, you know, say to myself, well, Kate, you felt really safe and I know how much I love my children and there's no way I'd have taken a risk. I think the worst thing though about the focus on our behaviour and, you know, if we could change it, we would have. We can't change it. But it takes the focus away from the abductor. Mm. And that becomes quite frustrating for us because Madeline's still missing. And the, those, that person or those responsible for taking her are still at large. So the question is, how far and how involved were the actual McCants? Because they did do a lot of media campaigning. They 
their behavior around the media was extremely bizarre, but they were acting on advice. So they could have been mind controlled through every single aspect of it. And they could. And what, what was the most bizarre thing that the public found was that they didn't actually go look for their child. And I've spoken to a lot of people over the weeks, who local people who'd given up a lot of time. You've talked about the support that they've given you. I met people who didn't go to work for more than a week because every day they were down on the beach searching the streets. Did you, as a mother, Kate, just sometimes think, I've got to go and be out there with them. I want to go and just physically look as well. I mean, I did. Um... I mean, we've been working really hard, really, at apart from the first 48 hours, as Jerry said, were incredibly difficult and we were almost non-functioning, I'd say. Um, but after that, you get strength from somewhere. We've certainly had loads of support and that's given us strength. And it's been able to make us focus, really, so we have actually, in our own way, it might not be physically searching, but we've been working really hard and doing absolutely everything we can, really, to get Madeline back. But they did feed the beast. They did keep pressuring and they are still very, very active in the media. They've actually highlighted the relationship between the police and, the, and what can happen in the media. Victims' families are often asking that because they're saying, how come this case garners so much airtime, so many column inches? What we do know, of course, is that the police will respond to media pressure. And again, this brings us back to Mark William Thomas, and I'm going to include a clip from some of the brilliant work that was done by Richard Hall. On the 15th of September 2007, the Gazeta Digital website published an article by Duarte Levy and Paolo Reese about Mark Williams Thomas and his views on the Madeleine McCann case. After hearing him on Sky News, they wrote, Mark Williams Thomas urged Portuguese police to ditch the case against the McCanns, a case that he classified as ludicrous and follow another lead that he thinks could take the PJ to the real kidnapper. And this is what he described as the similar disappearance of an eight-year-old girl, Joanna Cipriano, two years earlier. This comment, which went unchallenged, was almost unbelievable. The truth of the matter is that Joanna Cipriano's mother, Leono Cipriano, and her brother brutally murdered the little girl after she discovered them committing incest. Both later made full confessions, the one by her brother being detailed, graphic, and gruesome in the extreme. The person who led the successful investigation was Gonchalo Amaral. Both murderers were sentenced to 16 years and are still in jail today. It beggars belief that Williams Thomas could get away with such a monumental untruth in front of millions of viewers. A professed expert, he had successfully fed the abduction myth. But then it was the Murdoch-owned and controversial Sky News that was giving Williams Thomas the airtime. In the next clip, this is the first time having worked with Max Clifford. I mean, usually my voice would be shaking when I was on the phone with him because he was a very scary individual. But this is the first time I've ever seen him nervous in front of a camera. And uh, at least now he's got some compensation um, to compensate him for what they put him through. Uh, what did he suffer as a matter of interest? Well, he suffered months of being attacked and all kinds of things being written about him, uh, that uh, the police had confiscated his uh, computer and there were images of child pornography, totally untrue. Those kind of things that were thrown at him over a long period of time. Don't forget that he was attacked by the British media as soon as his uh, status, his Alguido status was put in place um, and the McCanns followed some time afterwards. So his attack went on even longer and were in many ways even more vicious and nasty than the McCanns suffered when they got um, eventually their half a million pounds compensation from Express newspapers. Yes, yeah, so the financial shenanigans around the Madeleine McCann story are interesting. And I mentioned it before because it is mind-boggling that from the day that she disappeared, Bell Pottinger, who was a seriously heavy-duty PR firm, was paid half a million pounds to promote Madeleine's story in front of every tabloid newspaper for the next six months. But from the moment she disappeared, from the moment the 3rd of May happened and it was announced she was missing. 
the McCanns were immediately surrounded by lots of professional advice and advisors. And everything we have done has been by taking counsel from experts around us, but we were advised that generally raising awareness of a disappearance will help in the search for that person. It helped Kate and I, and we have taken strength, not just from the people who have supported us, but we have taken strength ourselves by being active in the search.